I'm very pleased to have the opportunity for both Ali and I to share Quintile's experience um, uh, with the, our RBM journey, so our risk-based monitoring journey, and in addition to talk about our experience in using RBM on oncology trials. We are going to start with a general overview. I'm going to take you through a general overview of our RBM strategy, which Quintiles calls Data-Driven Trial Execution, or the short name DTE. We chose that nomenclature because um, many of our customers actually don't like the risk term of risk-based monitoring. They, they understand in the strategy we want to try to de-risk. Um, and so, we, you know, we've used terms centralized monitoring and other concepts. For us, the data-driven component of this is so prevalent and so important um, that that is what we call our RBM opportunity. So we're going to give a general overview of DTE, RBM, and then we're going to move into some specific considerations for oncology trials. So the slide that you're looking at right now kind of gives you a sense of where are we at in the market and the background for this. Well, you all know that RBM is a hot topic. We have more than 400 people registered today to listen to this webinar, and we've had a tremendous response to the webinars we've done in the past. And we know that given the industry challenges, both from a cost, productivity, and more importantly, moving medicines to market faster, we have to come up with really new solutions that are going to enable us to bring drugs to market in a much more cost-effective way. So. Everybody is interested in what RBM has to offer in terms of improving quality, improving costs, and improving throughput. We know from some market surveys that we've done that within the next two years, more than 80% of the pharmaceutical and biotech industry will be interested in implementing some type of RBM approach. And so we're at a very good point of being able to do some of this implementation. Secondarily, you all know that over the last 18 months to two years, we've had some critical position papers that have come out of the FDA as well as the EMA, which quite frankly has given us all permission to take the next steps forward in terms of moving, um, out, moving ahead with our RBM strategies. The FDA, of course, emphasizes a data-driven approach, and the EMA emphasizes a very systematic approach to how we um, accomplish RBM. Quintiles has taken both of those to heart in terms of the application of our DTE strategy. Additionally, we know the work that was done by the CTTI consortium as well as the Transcelerate group really emphasizes the importance of RBM and dynamic monitoring and also emphasizes that the strategy of, re of SDV for 100% of patients and the same monitoring strategy across all patients and all studies um, is neither relevant or appropriate in today's modern age of technology, even with what we're doing in clinical trials. And so studies, many studies have been done that show that the value of SDV at 100% and the, at the net of the queries that that really generates on critical data is at 2% or less in many cases. So we, we know from some of the work that's been done from the consortiums as well as other studies that we have a real opportunity to do things differently. So if we move to the next slide, I want to give you an overview um, of what we're going to talk about related to oncology. And we get lots of questions at Quintiles around, can we do this in oncology? And it's been interesting. In our journey in risk-based monitoring, um, which we started more than eight years ago, and I'll give you a preview of that in a moment, what, um, what, what we've been learning is we can do RBM on almost every study. We can use DTE. It's really a continuum of what we use. And it's the components of our RBM strategy that I'll tell you more about that we can apply at various different, with various different studies and various different indications. And we're really learning that there's value in bringing this methodology to almost every indication and every type of study. Now, we all know that oncology has um, some unique characteristics. Um, it is always more complex in the in, for the most part. Uh, patient safety issues are critical. Um, our patients are sicker, so there's higher morbidity, there's mortality, uh, the nature of the disease and the progression is complicated. So it's 
very important that in oncology studies that you tailor the RBM strategy to meet the unique needs of, of patients. But to be honest, the RRBM strategy and, and a good RBM strategy really tailors to that therapeutic area and the risk associated with it. The other piece is, you know, the extensive medical record and the hospitalizations and the rates of AEs and SAEs. Um, and that's a very important consideration as you put together your RBM plan. So the complexity of the study and the, uh, the type of sites that you're going to be utilizing, you really have to have a clear understanding of that. And when we get into the oncology specific examples, Allie's going to give you some really good um, uh, examples of how we've managed that on current, current and past studies. So I'm going to now go into um, what is Quintile's RBM experience. And I mentioned it's a continuum. We've been doing um, parts of RBM for about the last eight years. This, and those components included strategies of reduced SDB, widening of the monitoring visit interval, so not monitoring as frequently, um, also looking at triggered and targeted monitoring types of efforts. That experience has now evolved into, and also on-site and on-site as well as remote monitoring. That experience has evolved with collective learnings into what our DTE offering is today. You can see on the slide that we've done more than 80 projects. I think today, Ali, I think we're at about 90, 92 projects. Um, if I looked at the latest data, as I looked at the latest data, um, it involves more than 20,000 sites and, and 200,000 subjects. By the time we get to 2017, we will be close. We will almost double those numbers. So um, we expect for our RBM strategy to continue to evolve with our continued experience. You'll also see that 11% of our uh, trials were oncology studies, and that included, uh, you know, lung cancer, uh, breast cancer, thyroid cancer, gastric cancer, colorectal cancer, ovarian cancer. So, and, and the studies that we're looking at now that are coming on board broaden that experience.